Paper House followers. Today we're going to be doing some paint pouring. Um, so I got a few things here. So I have these 8 by 10 stretch canvases. Um, I did go ahead and grab a 10 pack. Um, this was the front of the packaging here. Because um, I am going to be doing a couple of them. Um, along with, I have two of these 16 ounce pouring medium from Deco Art. And then I have some paint, cheap paints here. So I have a magenta, a gold, an ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, and then of course my white. So I did go ahead and prep some of my colors here, but I wanted to show you guys on camera one of prepping one of the colors. Um, first things first, please make sure you're working on a flat surface and that you have it covered. Um, I have just a garbage bag laying down, but another great thing is like those um, 10 disposable cooking trays that you can get at the dollar store. Those are gonna work great. Um, to kind of prop my canvas up and make sure it's even, I did go ahead and I attach these little push pins. It just kind of makes it even for me. And so it elevates my canvas up. So. I want to elevate it up so that my paint will drip on the sides and not pool. And then also by putting the push pins on a canvas on the corners here, I'm not worried about um, possibly putting something that's going to push my canvas up and dome it or leave a funky line in it. So that is why I do have it in, um, or I do use the push pins on the corner here. And then if you have like those little red solo cups or a measuring cup. That's what you're going to need to mix up all of your color in. So let's get started mixing one of the colors. So I got my cup here. And with this, you want to have your medium be two to one with your acrylic paint here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm gonna drop in about like 10 of these little blobs. And all I'm doing is giving it a good little squeeze. So that's about the amount of paint I have. And because I am doing a couple, um, I am doing about four ounces of your pouring medium. So your paint ratio might be a little bit different than mine today if you're doing a smaller project. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna stir that up. And you wanna make sure you get this nice and stirred. You're scraping the bottom. You might have to kind of scrape the sides a little bit, making sure you're getting that pouring medium all mixed in. Now, if you're doing your pour and you don't think um, your pores have enough um, cells, a great way to add to that is just a little WD-40 or we have a silicone blast. Um, that will help you create some really good cells. So I'm just gonna show you how liquidy this is. It's gonna, you're not gonna use very much paint in all your pores, so you'll have a good chunk left over, but you do use a good amount of your medium. Very fluid. Okay. All right, you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and start with that first pour, and I'm gonna go ahead and pour my colors into the one cup. So I'm gonna start with this darker blue. I think I'm gonna come in with this gold. And then the magenta. And then this brighter blue. I'm really no rhyme or reason on what I'm doing here in the way I'm pouring my colors. Um, if you do have colors that aren't gonna complement each other and possibly turn brown, I would kind of factor that in. You always wanna have, 
be choosing your colors a little bit carefully. That's probably more than plenty. I think I'm going to go ahead and end it with this gold and a little bit of white. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to pour a little bit of white onto my board and take my popsicle stick and just really spread it out. I'm doing this because I find that if I have a hard time getting my paint to spread, if my canvas already has a good little layer on it, my paint will spread a little bit better. Okay. Again, just scraping it all the way to the other side, making sure I'm getting all the little crevices kind of covered a little bit. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my cup and instead of just plopping it on the top and flipping it over, I'm gonna actually spin my cup in a circle. Okay, so we're gonna do a spiral pour and it's just gonna start going and I'm just gonna try to keep it as tight as I can. And I'm just slightly moving my hand. You can kind of see those spirals come out. All right, and then I can kind of just let it flow or I can help it along and kind of spread it out. And I'm just kind of going back and forth with the canvas. If you stay tilted one way for a long time, you might kind of lose a little bit um, of a look that you might be going for. So if you like the way it is, I suggest little tilts, little, little tilts, or you're gonna have to let it flow. Ooh, I'm loving the way that looks, you guys. I'm gonna... See how the lines are moving as I move my um, canvas around? This is so fun. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm having a little bit of hard time getting my um, paint to kind of come over here. So I'm just gonna scoop up my little drop-ins here. So you can just kind of use your hand to help cover those corners. Um, and then once that kind of has some paint, it'll help any of your access paint on your canvas as it starts to flow off it will go over those corners because it's already wet and has some paint it's not getting caught up on any dry parts okay and again if you don't want your hands to get any paint on them i really suggest having um some gloves Okay. Oh my gosh, look how fun this is, you guys. Now, from here, I really like to suggest people to come in with a heat gun. So that's really going to pop any bubbles that you have, and it's going to help you see those cells form. Now, if you don't have a heat gun, it will be okay. You just might end up having some, again, some of those bubbles. So see, just kind of going over this, you can see those little bubbles pop. And this piece going to kind of help some of those cells just show up just a tad more. As this dries, again, the cells are going to come up to the surface more. And you're going to see co different colors kind of pull through on this.
And again, I don't want to stay in one spot too long because I don't want to be drying my paint and overheating it. Look at that. How fun. Ooh, I can't wait to see this piece dry, you guys. I can already tell it's going to be one of my favorites. Um, I really like the gold that's throughout this. I can see some of this blue, the brighter blue, finally starting to pull through a little bit over here and in between the lines. Now, again, if I wanted to, I could kind of move this a little bit more. Um, and when I do that, my lines are going to shift. Colors are going to get pulled a little bit more, but I'm liking the way it looks. So, I, again, I'm going to go ahead and leave it. I'm going to leave it on this. I'll leave it on a flat surface to go ahead and dry probably on this sheet as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this all to the side and then we're going to go ahead and start on our second pour. Okay, you guys, this one's pretty fun. I did go ahead and grab, I had some extra yarn laying around, um, but I've done it with jute before. Just really comes down to what you have at home. You can make it work for you. But I'm going to first go ahead and I'm just going to cover this canvas with a white. And this isn't going to be as thin as layer as my last one. I want this to kind of have a good amount of layer so that my color can kind of get worked into this because we're going to create a feather. So I'm just going to kind of move this back and forth. I'm going to use my fingers to kind of cover up those edges that aren't getting touched. Okay, so now that we got that nice and prepped, we're going to color our uh, string here. So I'm just going to kind of put my color I'm just going to and I'm putting them on about a half of an inch, I guess you could say, um, amount on here. I could do more or less. It just comes down to kind of a preference. And then I like these, I'm kind of doing a little smaller here. And some pink, and I'm gonna finish in that bright blue. Okay. So, I'm gonna make sure this is getting nice and colored. Just kind of push in here. Might have to rotate it a little. Kind of go back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to lay this diagonal here. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull out towards me. Look how fun that is. It's like a little rainbow. So I'm just going to pop this right back in here. Just kind of try to pull up some more of that color. And then I'm going to lay it back down. And then I'm going to pull it out. Oops, I got some of that white coming back on there. I'm going to go ahead and just pour that off. How fun is that looking, you guys? I might go ahead and kind of lay this guy back down. Since I don't have much room to play with here, it's kind of my feather didn't really turn out. Oh, there. So don't, don't be afraid to go ahead and lay your string back down and go ahead and form your look a little bit more. I'm gonna go through with a popsicle stick and just kind of create that spine of my feather. Ooh, look, you can see cells forming. This is so exciting, you guys. 
I'm going to go ahead and come in with that heat gun. Again, just kind of popping any bubbles. You're going to see cells start to form. All that good stuff. I love the colors in this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and kind of take that white and pour right on this edge because it's kind of getting, it's not getting any paint still. Again, just kind of helping it along where it might need a little extra help. Okay, this guy I think got pretty good coverage. I'm really excited to see how this turns out, you guys. So I did kind of pull a little too wide here and I hit my wall. So I do have a little bit more feathering over on the base than I wanted. I could possibly tilt this and it might pull my feathers out a little bit more, but I'm okay with it. It kind of, it makes it look a little more whimsical to me. So I'm gonna, again, I'm just coming in with that heat gun. Look at all those cells start to form. I think this would look really cute with a like vinyl on it. Um, I'm not sure what I'd put on it for a vinyl yet, but we might have to come back in once this is dry and put a vinyl on it. All right, you guys, I have poured enough um, of my paint to go ahead and do another pour. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna pull this aside and let it dry. Okay, you guys, now for our next pour, we're just gonna go ahead and do that one cup and pour onto the canvas. Again, I have my little um, push pins into my canvas. Now we're gonna do that single cup again, you guys. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pour my colors in. Again, no really rhyme or reason. I'm gonna put some white. Let's go ahead and put this pink or magenta. This bright blue. And do gold. Do that darker blue. Come in with that magenta. We're gonna do some white. Some gold. Maybe some more of this brighter blue. Some darker blue. Okay. So I'm gonna pull this cup over here. I am just gonna, I, you don't have to, but I am gonna just put a little bit of my white on here. Um, and then what I like to do is I like to hold my cup I'm going to put my canvas right on it and I'm going to flip it over. So I'm going to pull this up and kind of swirl it a little bit. And then I'm just going to go ahead and let it flow. Now, if I wanted to, again, I can, I can help it along the way. There's a lot of paint, so it does need a little bit of help. And again, you don't have to go quite as many, um, like corner to corner like I am. You can just do small little movements. Or again, you can do those big movements. I'm gonna kind of pour, I have a little bit of excess in my cup, so I'm just gonna pour them on the corners. <clears throat> I 
How fun is that, you guys? I love a pour like that because you, you don't have to think about it. When I'm thinking about it, I overthink. Um, I'm like, oh, I don't have the color where I need it. And my brain is all over the place. Okay, so again, I may come in with that heat gun. And then over time, when it dries, I may have colors coming up to the surface and more cells are gonna form. It's gonna be beautiful. So just come in with that heat gun. Popping those bubbles along the way. I love when I have a gold in a paint pour because it's just such a beautiful accent to all the other colors. I think I'm gonna just pull it a little bit more back and forth. Oh, I'm just loving it, loving, loving. Again, just gonna, I just keep coming in with that heat gun when I move it, because I wanna make sure all my bubbles are pop. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. Look at that lacing right through there. These are beautiful. Um, again, I can't wait to see this dried because I know it's going to look amazing. Um, I'm just going to go ahead. I got some corners that just aren't getting paint. They're being stubborn. So I'm just going to pull up the extra paint that has fallen on the bottom. And just kind of cover my edges. All right, you guys. That is my third pour. Look, I mean, I still have a little bit of extra and all these, I could probably get one more pour out. Um, and I've done three completely different pours. I haven't even used my other pouring medium yet. Basically, all these canvases with just these two bottles of pouring medium. It is amazing, it's mind blowing, and such a fun family craft. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side and we're gonna let it dry and then we'll come back when everything is all dried, okay? Okay, you guys, these are all dried now. So I'm gonna show them off from the order that we poured them. So this is gonna be that first little spiral one we did. Look how fun. Look at those cells. And then this is gonna be that feather one. The cells formed really nice in those too. So I just love the color in this one. This one's so fun and vibrant. And then here's that very last one we did. So you can see some of that color I was saying it did pull through. Like I had that pink magenta come through and some of that brighter blue. And I had some more cells form throughout this pour. So fun. I love how all three of these, they just turned out so differently. Um, and I love them all for different reasons. Now, I do want to point out a few things. If you have any of your canvases where maybe your paint cracked, that is more than likely your paint is too thick. Um, you want to make sure we're having that really liquidy consistency with your um medium and your acrylic the best way i like to kind of explain it when that when you pull up your paint um, and let it drip back into the, like the rest that's in the cup you don't want to see any um like big blobs happening you want it to like drop in like it is water and just smooth out nicely all these are so fun um i can't wait to see what you guys created and thank you so much for joining me and happy crafting mm -hmm.